Okay, this is gonna be a video going over the advanced algebra two formative. Okay, our first step, okay, is always to make a table using our parent function. Okay, so this is going to be negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. This is absolute value. So absolute value of negative two is two, negative one is one, zero is zero, one is one. Okay, so then what I wanna do is I wanna solve the inside. So that solution is two, so that replaces that. I wanna find the interval which is one divided by the number attached to X, which is one, so that's gonna be three, four, one, zero. All I'm gonna do with the Y's is add five, so that's seven, six, five, six, seven. If I plot those, zero, seven, one, six, two, five, three, six, four, seven. Okay, and I got a V shape. So to find the domain of range, I want to label that turn, which is at uh, a 2, 5. And I'm going to label my arrows, negative infinity, positive, positive, negative. I'm sorry, positive, positive. The smallest x value is negative infinity, biggest is positive. The smallest y value is at 5, biggest would be infinity. Increasing, decreasing. All I care about is these, and I start from the left. So it is decreasing from negative infinity to 2 and increasing from 2 to infinity. Negative two squared is four. Negative one squared is one. Zero squared is zero. One squared is one. Two squared is four. Okay? All right? I solved the inside. If I solved the inside, that would be negative four. Okay? My interval is negative, is one divided by the number attached to x, which is one. So it's gonna be one, so now it's negative three, negative two. Subtract one, be negative five, negative six. All right, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna multiply by negative one, and then I'm gonna add seven. Okay, because that's what that negative out front is. So that's going to be four times that's negative four plus seven would be three. Negative one plus that would be six. This would be zero, seven. <clears throat> Same six, three. Okay, so negative six over three up. Negative five over six up. Negative four over seven up. Negative three over six up. Negative two over three up. And this is a U shape. Okay, I'll label that. That's negative infinity, negative infinity, positive negative. That point is negative four seven. So my smallest x value is negative infinity. The biggest is positive infinity. Correct. So this is x, y, x, y, x, y. Okay, my smallest y value is negative infinity, and the biggest is seven. Okay, working from left to right. I only care about the x's for increasing, decreasing. Negative infinity to negative four is the increase. Negative four to infinity is the decrease. Okay? Square root function. Okay? Now, I cannot take the square root of x because those are negative. Uh, square root of zero is zero. Square root of one is one. Two is a decimal. Three is a decimal. Four would be two. So those are the ones I'm going to use for that. Okay, I solved the inside, that would be negative six. My interval is one, so that's negative five. This would have been negative four, this would have been negative three, this is negative two. All I would do there is subtract one, so it's negative one, zero, and one. So negative six over, negative one down. Negative five over zero. Negative two over one. And the graph goes like this, so I label this point. It's negative six, negative one. This is infinity, infinity, okay? Smallest x value is negative six, biggest is infinity. Smallest y value is negative one, biggest is infinity. Okay, increasing the whole way from negative six to infinity, and this would be none. Okay. Um, next one, absolute value here. Okay, all right, <clears throat> negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. Absolute value is the parent function, that would be two, one, zero, one, two. Okay, uh, if I go to solve the inside, there's nothing there, 
So that's not going to change. There's nothing attached to x, so I can leave those. What I'm going to do is do times 4 minus 3. So that's 8 would be 5, that'd be 4. Uh, minus 3 would be 1. This would be negative 3, 1, 5. Okay, so negative 2, 5. Negative 1, 1. 0, 3. 1, 1. 2, 5. This is a V shape. So this is 0, 3. This is infinity, infinity. This is negative infinity, positive. So my domain, smallest x is negative infinity, biggest is positive. Smallest y is 3, biggest is infinity. All right. Start from left to right, decrease, increase. Okay. All right. <clears throat> this one, this is going to be a quadratic. X squared, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 1 squared is 1, 0, 1, 4. Now, if I go to solve the inside, the inside's a little different now. X plus, 2x plus 4 equals 0. That'd be 2x equals negative 4. That'd be x equals negative 2. Now, my interval is 1 divided by the number attached to x. Now, I got that. That's a half. So that'd be negative 1.5, that'd be negative 1, negative 2.5, negative 3. Okay? All right, outside I got nothing. Here I'm just going to add 3. So that's going to be 7, uh, 4, 3, 4, 7. So negative 3 over, 7 up. Negative 2.5 over, 4 up. Negative 2 over, 3 up. Negative 1.5, 4 up. Negative 1 over 7 up. And that's going to be a U shape. I know it doesn't look like it, but it would be. So this is negative 2, 3. This is infinity, infinity. This is negative infinity, infinity. Okay? So my smallest X value is negative infinity. The biggest is positive. Smallest Y value would be 3. The biggest would be infinity. I am uh, decreasing from negative infinity to negative 2. I am increasing from negative 2 to infinity. Okay? All right, you got a square root function here. Uh, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two, square root of x. We cannot use those. Square root of zero is zero, square root of one, that's gonna be a decimal, decimal, two, okay? I solve the inside, that's gonna be four, okay? I am going to, uh, my interval would be one, so this would be five, this would have been six, this would have been seven, this would be eight, okay? I'm gonna multiply by two and minus five. Okay, so that would be negative 5. 1 times 2 is 2, minus 5 is negative 3. 2 times 2 is 4, minus that would be negative 1. So 4 over, negative 5 down. 5 over, negative 3 down. 8 over, negative 1 down. Goes like this. That's going to be 4, negative 5. That's going to be infinity, infinity. My smallest x value is 4 with a square bracket. My biggest would be infinity. My smallest y is negative 5, biggest is infinity. It is increasing the whole way from 4 to infinity, and this would be none. Okay? All right. <clears throat> I got absolute value here. That's absolute values. So that's 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay? I solved the inside. That's going to be negative 5. Uh, I don't have any number attached to x, so this is going to be a standard interval of 1. So it's negative 4, negative 3, negative 6, negative 7. Now what I'm going to do is multiply by negative 1 half, which is going to flip the graph. So it's negative 1, negative 1 half, uh, 0, negative 1 half, uh, negative 1. Okay? So negative 5 over 0 up. I'm sorry, negative 7 over, negative 1 down. Negative 6, negative 1 half. Uh, or I did negative 5, 0. Negative 4, 1 half. Negative 3, negative 1. Negative infinity, negative. That's positive infinity, negative. Your smallest x value is negative infinity. Your biggest is positive. Your smallest y is negative infinity. Your biggest is zero. It is increasing from negative infinity to negative five. It is decreasing from negative five to infinity. All right, remember left to right. Okay, that's how you do those increasing decreases. Okay, 
Okay, now we got a, a square root with a negative on the inside. So let's talk about how we do that. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Okay, that's a square root. Negative number, negative number. Zero, square root of zero, one. I'm gonna use three, I'm gonna not use two, I'm gonna use uh, four, because that gives me that perfect one. Now, if I go to solve the inside, you gotta be careful. Negative x plus three equals zero. That'd be negative x equals negative three, and I would divide by negative one. So x equals three, so that replaces a zero. Now, since I have this negative attached, that's one divided by negative one, which is negative one. So what this means is I'm going to add a negative one going this way. So three plus negative one would be two. Two plus negative one, this would have been a one. This would have been zero. This would have been um, negative one, okay? All right, what else am I gonna do? I'm gonna subtract four by the lots. That's negative four, negative three. Negative two, okay? So three over, negative four down. Three over, negative four down. Two over, negative three down. Okay, one no, zero no. Negative one over, negative two down. So here's what this looks like. All right, where that is three, negative four. All right, this would be a left arrow going up. So my smallest x value is negative infinity. Biggest would be three. My smallest y is negative four. My biggest would be infinity. I start from left to right. That's a decrease from negative infinity to three. And this one would be none. Okay, all right. Graphing the piecewise function. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna graph this in pieces. Since it's greater than five, okay, so for two x plus one, I'm gonna do five and six. Because I always include that, and then I look at the inequality, that's one more up. So. That would be 10, 11, that'd be 13. Now that'd be a filled in circle. So 5, 11, well, it's sort of off the graph. 6, 13, way off the graph. Now, I don't have any open circles there, and since it's less than, I have to have a left arrow. And that's the only way I can make a left arrow, okay? Then I got uh, negative x plus three between one and five, so I have to go all the way to five. Now the five will be open, everything else will be closed. So that's negative one, that'd be two, that'd be one, that'd be zero, that'd be negative one, that'd be negative two, okay? So one over two up, two over one up, whoops, sorry, that's not right. One over two up, <coughs> two over one up, three over zero up, four over negative one, five negative two, I have an open circle, so I gotta do this, okay? X is less than one. 3x minus 2. Now I include the 1, and that will be open. And then the next less, um, whoops, I graphed that wrong. Hold on. Sorry, I graphed that wrong. Like, why am I, why do I have that? That should be 5, 5 over, I did a negative 5. Okay, so 5 over 11 up. Sorry, that should be over here. Okay, and then 6, 13. Sorry, that's greater than what I was doing there. All right, less than uh, would be zero, okay? All right, so I plug that in there. That's uh, three minus two, which is one. That's negative two, okay? So one over, one up, okay? That's open, zero, negative two, okay? Now this would be a left arrow. So sorry about that, okay? All right. All right, now let's go to this one. All right, x minus six. X is greater than four, so that means four and five, okay? This four will be open. So if I put that in there, that'd be a negative two, it'd be negative one. So four over negative two is an open, five negative one is here, okay? And then since it's greater than, it means a right arrow, okay? Negative two, uh, when that, it's just five, it's gonna be negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, and four, okay? All right, so uh, since it's five, that just means these are all five, okay? So in essence, what I'm doing is negative two, five. I'm just graphing points all the way to four, and then that would be a filled in circle like that, okay? And then for negative two x plus two, since it's x is less than, I'm gonna include that, and that's gonna be open. The next less than thing would be negative three. So negative two times negative two is four, plus two would be six, that'd be eight. So negative two over six up, which would be open. Negative three over eight up, 
And since that's less than, that is a left arrow through there. So sorry about that previous problem. Okay, slope, we've done a bunch of this. I'm gonna go pretty quickly through this. Uh, this is X, this is Y, this is X, this is Y. You can either drop the Y's down or you can turn the wheel to the left, either one. That's gonna be negative 11. Uh, negative four minus that would be uh, positive one. So if I divide that, that's negative 11, okay? Minus, minus, two, negative three, two, five, zero over negative eight, which is just zero. Okay, all right. Minus, minus, negative three, 10. Two, negative one. Three minus uh, negative one is negative four. Two, uh, 12, 10 minus negative uh, two would be 12. That would reduce to negative one third. Okay, write the equations. We've also worked on this a bunch in class. That's negative four, five. That's eight, three. That's negative 12 over two, which is negative six. So y equals negative six x plus b. I use my x and my y. So that's eight, negative six times three is negative 18. And I would add 18. I got b is 26. So I got y equals negative six x plus 26. Okay, all right. This one minus minus, turn, one negative eight, turn, three two. That's negative two over negative 10, which is B one fifth, okay? So Y equals one fifth X plus B. I'm gonna use the positive numbers. That'd be three equals one fifth times two plus B. That's three equals two fifths plus B. Subtract two fifths, okay? Now, when you're dealing with a, um, Fractions, you need a common denominator. So what you would do is, uh, <clears throat> in essence, three to become five, you would multiply that by five and five. So it's 15 over five minus two over five, and then you subtract the top numbers, which gives you 13 over five. Okay, so y equals one fifth x minus 13 over five. Okay, that's right, okay, all right. And this one, minus, minus, turn the wheel, turn the wheel. That's negative 13 over zero, which is undefined. That also tells me to look up at my stuff and I get x equals four as my equation, okay? All right, graph the lines. Down two, up one, two, three, over one. Graph the line, this is y intercept is eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is negative one over one, which means down one, right one. This one right here, I would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then up one, two, three, four, five, over one, two. This one is one, two, three. Down one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, x equals negative seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's on the x-axis and it's gonna be a vertical line. X equals two, one, two, vertical line, terrible. Through that, okay? Y equals four, one, two, three, four, horizontal line. This one, what I'd have to do before I graph it, I'd have to add three X. So that's six Y equals three X plus 30, and then divide by six. That's Y equals one half X plus five. So then what I would do is I'd go one, two, three, four, five, and then go right one, I'm sorry, up one, right two, connect the dots, okay? This one, I would subtract X. So I got negative four Y equals negative X plus 12. I would divide by negative four. That's Y equals uh, one fourth X, 12 divided by negative four is negative three. So one, two, three, up one, over one, two, three, and four. Connect the dots. Okay. That's how you graph lines. All right, we shouldn't have any issue with that. All right, uh, <clears throat> so we're gonna write the equation, okay? Uh, the graph of the quadratic compressed vertically. So that means this, okay, quadratic, translated five left. Now the way I would get that is plus five, why? Because if I go to solve that, be x equals negative five. Well, what is that on the x-axis? Left five. 
down to, okay? Graph of an absolute value. Stretched vertically by a factor of four, reflected, so that's a negative four, translated three down, so just minus three on the outside, okay? Uh, square root function, okay? Reflected over the x-axis, translated three right, so that's minus seven, eight up. The graph of a cube function, Okay, all right, compressed by a factor of one eighth, translated three right, so that'd be minus three and five up. Okay. Okay, now we got pictures from graphs. So this is absolute value. So I gotta look at this point, which is two negative five. Okay, so absolute value tells me make that minus two, because if I solved it, that would get positive two, and then negative five. Now what I gotta do, if I count one over, it's one, two, three up. So I have to use a positive three. This one is a, quad, is a quadratic. That is at negative one, five. So I'd have to have plus one, plus five. Now this one is right one, down one. So I need a negative one on the outside there. Okay? This one is a square root. That's negative three, five. Okay? So I got a square root function. Negative three, that would be positive three, positive five. Now if I go right one, it's one, two. So it'd be two positive, okay? This is absolute value. That's zero, seven. So I got nothing on the inside, plus seven on the outside. If I go right one, it's only down a half. So I put negative one half there. Okay, I got two piecewise functions. So what I got to do is look at the inequality types. I got negative, uh, so I'm going to label this. This is negative 5, negative 4. This is 1, 2. Okay. All right. Now, uh, the inequality, it's two dots, so I'm going negative 5 to 1. Now, you got two options here on how to do this. You can find the slope, which is up 2 over 1, which is going to be 2x, okay, with a y-intercept of 1. Okay. Now, if you want to do the slope formula, you can do all that. Turn the wheel, negative 4, negative 5. Turn the wheel, 2, 1. That's negative um, 6 over negative 6, okay, uh, which is 1. Okay. Sorry, there should be a 1x over here because it's 2 over 2. All right. <clears throat> and I got y equals 1x plus b. Put the 2 in for y and the 1 in for x. That's 2 equals 2 plus b, subtract 1. I got b equals 1, and that would be my equation. All right, no problem. Here's another 2 dot 1. That's going from 1 to 4. Now, I would only put that underneath there because that's a closed circle. So 1, 0, 4, negative 3. Once again, you could sort of figure out the slope here as negative 1, but if you needed to, turn 0, 1, turn negative 3, 4. Okay, that's uh, 3 over negative 3, which is negative 1 y equals uh, negative one x plus b. Okay, put your uh, y in, put your x in. So it's negative three equals negative four plus b. Add four, I got b equals one. So that other, one, other equation is negative one x plus one. Okay, all right, so that's the piecewise one there. Okay, you got a couple different ones here. Uh, on this one, you're probably going to have to use this point and this point. That's uh, negative 2 over 2 up. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3. So this is negative 5, negative 3. No, not negative 5. Sorry. Negative 3. Okay. All right. I may have to use the slope formula and do that calculation. 2, negative 2. Negative 3, negative 5. Okay. That's going to be uh, positive 5. Um, positive three, okay, all right? Because if you go up one, two, three, four, five, over one, two, three, yep, and then one, two, three, four, five, over one, two, three. So what I gotta do is y equals five thirds x plus b. And I'm gonna put those in, that's gonna be negative three, um, and let's say negative five, 
plus b. So that's going to be negative 3 equals negative 25 over 3 plus b. And I want to add that to the other side. Okay. So once again, to get a common denominator, I would need to multiply that by 3. So that's negative 9 thirds plus, that's going to be 16 thirds. Okay. So this first equation is um, 5 thirds x minus 16 thirds. And it's going from x is less than negative 2. Because that's a left arrow. Okay, so it's less than. This one, you don't really need to do the slope formula. This is 1, 2, 3. This is a, a 4 up. That's negative 2, 4. This is a 2, 4. So we can obviously see that that's just going to be 4 from negative 2 to 2. So I don't need to line up the other one. Okay? All right? And then this last one, you're probably going to have to use this. Okay? All right? So um, that's 3 over 1 up. This is 4 over negative 1 down. Turn the wheel, 1, 3. Turn the wheel, negative 1, 4. Okay, that's going to be 2 over negative 1, which is negative 2. Okay, y equals negative 2x plus b. Okay, which is negative 1, negative 2, 4. Okay, that's negative 1 equals negative 8 plus b. Add 8, add 8. B equals 7, that's y equals negative 2x plus 7. Okay, and that is a right arrow, so it's greater than or equal to 3. Okay, I think these are the last two, the domains. What you want to do is label all these terms, that's 3, 0, 0, 3, uh, negative 3, 0, 0, negative 3. So don't outthink yourself here. Those are all the turn points. Smallest x value, negative 3. Biggest x value. 3. Smallest y value, negative 3. Biggest y value, positive 3. Okay, don't outthink yourself. This one, all right, this is a left arrow, okay, all right. Now, since it is horizontal, okay, it's only at x is negative 4. It's not like bent in any way. Now, this is going down, which is negative infinity. Now, up here, it's also at negative 4, but it's going up. So my smallest x value is actually negative 4. My biggest, my smallest y is negative infinity. My biggest is positive infinity. So that's what you do. That's a little tricky. That was a little one you had to think about a little bit. Okay. Now this one, okay, if I labeled all the arrows, left arrow going up, right arrow going up, left arrow going down, right arrow going down. Also, my turn, 0, negative 2, and 0, 2, okay? Now, you can do this a couple different ways. I would take a couple different answers here. If you went piece by piece, let's say you did this piece. Your smallest x value is negative infinity, and the biggest is positive infinity. Well, what does that mean? That means all real numbers. I don't need to do any more. If I do that with a union with this, I'm going to end up with the same thing, okay? Now, the range in this piece, the smallest y value is 2, and the biggest is infinity. Now, if you started with that piece, that's okay, too. Union, smallest y value is negative infinity. Biggest y value is negative 2. Okay, so that is adequate. You only needed that for that one. If you did the union with another one, that's, that's fine. Okay? And so that is the review for the transformation unit.